What does research say about early literacy intervention? EDUC 610 Assessment and in Intervention in Early Literacy by Rachel Couchy. Article 1 The effects of Fontes and Pinal's levelled literacy intervention on kindergarten students reading below grade level by Christy O'Dell. Introduction in this article, O'Dell, 2012, conducts a research study into the effectiveness of the LLI or Level Literacy Intervention Program, developed by Fontes and Pinnell in 2006. The objective of this research is to determine the LLI's ability to move from an intervention program to something used in all classrooms in a bid to raise test scores of struggling Foundation students. O'Dell, 2012, compares comparative growth between those receiving LLI in the classroom compared to those receiving guided reading. Summary O'Dell, 2012, notes that if a child is still struggling with literacy concepts beyond grade 2, they will continue to struggle for the rest of their academic life, have less chance of graduating high school and go on to a higher paying career. As LLI is marked as a literacy intervention program, can it work as a classroom strategy? Hypothesis. There will be no difference in the rate of growth between those students who receive LLI and those students who receive guided reading in the foundation level classroom. Critique. Strengths. Results are tallied over time. This study between two groups of students within the foundation year in order to, for results to be accurate and effectively reflect learning growth, data needed to be gathered over time. Both groups of students were tested early in the school year when a level zero result was recorded for all students. This was retested six months later, which is ample time to see learning growth. There was also a breakdown on benchmarks and reading levels. This article clearly explains how students given within the research group were tested via a Fontes and Pinnell test in the December, early in the US school year. Many recorded an A level of reading. The same students were retested against the F&P benchmarks at another six months after either LLI or guided reading instruction. Many LLI students moved from an A to a D or an E level by the end of the six months. Using Fontes and Pinnell data provide the concrete evidence of the children's progression of learning. Weaknesses. Time allocation of work. The, the article recommends that all students who are below benchmark receive LLI in the classroom for 30 minutes five times a week. Students who received guided reading had lessons with the teacher a maximum of two days a week within this study. This difference in time allocation means that students receiving LLI are getting 150 minutes more of explicit instruction compared to 30 to 60 minutes in the guided reading group. O'Dell 2012 neglects to analyse whether 150 minutes of guided reading would have yielded the same results. O'Dell does not investigate the connection between LLI and writing compared to guided reading. O'Dell 2012 explains that within the LLI program's student work through the skills of reading, writing and word work, the article states that this is part of LLI and does not further investigate whether further instruction in vocabulary development and producing their own writing has led to the increase in reading level. Guided reading has a sole focus on reading and reading skills like decoding and comprehension strategies. The difference could be connecting reading to writing and the program used could be negligible. No specifics about guided reading was conducted. Guided reading does not have the same prescriptive format as LLI. The structure of how guided reading is conducted was not outlined in the article. As defined by the Department of Education 2019, the practice of guided reading is based on the belief that the optimum learning for the reader occurs when they are assisted by an educator or expert other to read and understand a text with clear but limited guidance. Guided reading allows students to practice and consolidate effective reading strategies. 
What are the other students doing or how are they tracking? As its name suggests, LLI is designed as a literacy intervention program designed for students to be withdrawn from the classroom. The article does not elaborate on how the students in the class performed or re-performed now that only three to four students were receiving LLI every day. What's the growth of these core students to the detriment of the rest of the grade who are now getting less instruction or is it the teacher still expected to have a guided reading every day with the other students? This was not clear in the article as the focus was just on the struggling reading group. LLI is meant to be an intervention program given by an external person. Would we still see growth after the initial six months? What happens after six months? Are these students still staying on track? The article does not make recommendations on where to go next, besides suggesting that all schools in the district implement LLI in the classroom. No longitudinal studies are suggested. Conclusion. Menzies et al. 2014 tells us that the biggest precursor to early literacy success is phonemic awareness. Students have made growth in three reading areas on average over a six month period. This is not a great deal of progress, as most students would probably have, give, have shown progress given the amount of intervention they were receiving. The article needs to further investigate what happens beyond the six months and how the students can further support LLI, receive further support when LLI is no longer an option. LLI students made greater gains than doing guided reading. LLI was more often. Guided reading is not a prescriptive structure. And how would phonemic awareness work better with low literacy students? Articulate findings. Being at a school that uses Fontas of Pinnell for testing and has an LLI program, critiquing this article was of great interest to me. I first believe that Fontas of Pinnell way of teaching reading meant that students were getting those predictable structures and data to drive teaching necessary for future success. Over the past two years, my thoughts have begun to change. Having completed several units of this master's degree, as well as teaching English at a tertiary level, I began to better understand how children learn to read and became interested in brain science. I believe that focusing on phonemic awareness with struggling students with an A-level reading would be more appropriate than guided reading and LLI, as research shows that early phonemic awareness success is a bigger predictor of overall reading success, Menzies et al, 2008. I have the same children in my class again next year. It is my intention to keep focusing on ph phonemic awareness with a strong assessment, data and group intervention. Article 2, an early literacy intervention for preschoolers who need Tier 3 support by Ruth Kaminsky and Kelly Powell-Smith. Introduction. Hill 2012 states that phonological awareness is the ability to manipulate sounds and words in English. The connection between phonological and in particular phonemic awareness to early reading success has been well documented. Hill 2012. Kaminsky and Powell 2017 form a hypothesis that Phonological awareness instruction should be one step in a targeted literacy intervention program prior to any further reading instruction. Summary. Kaminsky and Powell Smith, 2017, investigate the position that students with low literacy ability, abilities in their foundation level of school require two things for success. One is to have a targeted T3 intervention, which is removed intervention from the classroom in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Tier 3 beginning whole grade, tier 2 small group in class, and the other to receive explicit and targeted phonological awareness instruction prior to the beginning being taught to read. This would involve tasks such as breaking down words into syllables, onset and rhyme, alliteration, and leading into phonemic awareness. Hill 2012. The research study does just that. It takes a group of six foundation level students for one-on-one -on -one intervention with a focus on teaching initial sounds. 
With an average of 10 lessons, the students were retested using Topal on the ability to isolate these phonemes. The results showed modest results as there were variances, variances from child to child. Critique strengths. Gains were only seen on the area of phonolo phonological awareness targeted by the inter intervention. There was no translation to other areas. Interestingly, the study found that when targeting only one aspect of phonological awareness and neglecting the rest, the children only became proficient in the element they received intervention in, Kaminsky and Powell, 2017. This suggests that teaching phonological awareness is a complex task which requires the teacher to look at many elements. Konza 2011 explains that phonological awareness acquisition and teaching is a hierarchy of skills which need to be developed in sequence beginning with rhyming and breaking down words into syllables before isolating individual phonemes. The study allowed for repetition of lessons with some students to indicate that this can benefit learning. Hattie 2012, not, sorry, Hattie 2009 researchers found that deep learning develops over time via multiple spaced interactions with new knowledge and concepts. This may require spacing practice over several days and using different activities to vary the instructions learners have with new knowledge. Kaminsky and Powell Smith 2017 ensured us that their study with summary students were receiving multiple exposures to the same content and some were not. With these repeated lessons, they found that they, these particular students made stronger gains and had a higher level of engagement with the program. Kaminsky and Powell Smith, 2017. Weaknesses. There was a focus on um, first sound fluency or described as FSF rather than whole aspects of phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is an umbrella term encompassing many skills. The authors of the study chose to focus on one element of phonological awareness to test their results. The children were tested on their ability to isolate initial sounds in words. Whilst this skill is important, it's not, it should not be a measure of their research. The assessment should have highlighted the child's ability to break down a word into its individual phonemes and this is a skill that they are needing to be able to read rather than encouraging a look at the first sound, guess the rest. Some students in the groups had ILPs and diagnosed learning difficulties and some did not. Attendance and socioeconomic status of the group was also varied. The group was quite varied in their needs and abilities and some of the findings were inconsistent. Some of the students in the research did not attend all of the sessions, which means that the ones who attended more naturally progressed and continued with the intervention style they were receiving. Conclusion. Phonological awareness instruction should be varied and include all elements of phonological awareness as this for student, this allows students to make progress in all areas of phonics, and then it allows them to apply their knowledge to their own reading. Galati et al. 2009. Phonological awareness instruction should form the basis of all good literacy classroom programs for students beginning school. Research widely supports the teaching of phonological and phonemic awareness explicitly in the foundation and early years of schooling. Hill 2012. Children need to be explicitly taught letters and sounds so they're able to make these connections and remove the need to guess and look at pictures. Hardman, 2019. Students need repeated exposures. Learning to read and becoming literate is a complex process. Children require multiple exposures to all aspects of decoding and comprehension skills. The research demonstrates that multiple exposures greatly improve learner attention of new knowledge. Hattie, 2009. Articulate findings. In my grade two, three, we have a varied cohort. We have a group of children in grade three who are capable literacy students. Most reading and writing at level and some reading at grade five and some spelling at year nine level. 
The U2s, on the other hand, are overall academically low and need a lot of support. We have a group of grade of five students who range from an A to an E in their Fontes and Pennell scores. This study has reinforced my already strong belief that phonological awareness, and in particular, phonemic awareness, needs to be explicitly taught in the early years of schooling. And students, as such as those that I have mentioned, will need to be provided with this to ensure that they do not go into the middle years of school still lacking. It should not be something isolated to the junior school. Article 3, Technology-Based Reading Intervention Programs for Elementary Grades, an Analytical View by Hassan Jamashvina, Shamia Gararib, Theodore Link, Pierre Blaisvika and James Ritchie. This study aims to provide a comprehensive review of studies who applied technology to their reading intervention from 2000 to 2019, Introduce briefly the reading concepts of phonological awareness, phonics, comprehension, fluency, and vocabulary, as well as their common instructional approaches. Describing the content and instructional mechanisms of the identified programs in order to provide a basis for researchers and developers new in this field. Analyze review studies from various aspects. The author explains the strengths and weaknesses of using literacy-based apps and computer programs as part of an early intervention plan. Summary. Technology provides tools that can be used as engagers and facilitators of thinking, helping young children construct their world around them. The SCAT 2008. The authors begin by researching on Google Scholar for reading intervention programs, which involve some elements of technology. They find 42 studies which focus on improving the skills of phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. From this, they find critiques of the latest apps and technology-based programs focused on literacy learning. The article provides a paragraph of information on each of the program outlining its strengths and weaknesses under the above mentioned key headings. Critique strengths. Each program is under the key heading skills of phonics, vocabulary, fluency and comprehension. It is easy for the teacher to go to the necessary area of need and find a computer program or app that is best suit the needs of the student. The study looked at grade levels and how there was a huge focus on the early years to foundation, but when it came to apps and programs designed to help students struggling in literacy skills, there was a lack of middle to upper years. And this was a suggestion of the research in this area. The study also highlights that 42 programs, of 42 programs, only one focused on the skill of vocabulary demonstrating that this is a core skill which should not be solely overlooked. Research shows that by extending a child's vocabulary, we can extend their ability to comprehend text. Oakley, 2011. The SCAT 2008 states that technology can be an extremely useful tool for children with disabilities. The article explains that using visual, visual literacy in the form of multimodal apps and programs means that children can access literacy on another level, giving them exposure to core skills in an engaging and fun way. Weaknesses. No meta-analysis was conducted. A more in-depth meta-analysis of the characteristics of intervention programs, such as the interface design, adaptive, adaptiveness, affordableness, affordance, sorry, and game elements used in the program will be under review. The study states that it is a comprehensive review of the effectiveness of these technological based interventions. However, there was no concrete data provided to support these, the use of these programs and if it made any change to student learning outcomes for the students who use them. There was no initial or final assessment data or use any of use in any of the trial of these apps. Conclusion. In order to make intervention successful, it needs to be targeted and explicit, but it also needs to be fun and engaging and interactive. Winch et al. 2009. 
Children are more likely to be willing to attend intervention if they enjoy attending. By using reading apps and computer programs means that children have the opportunity to reinforce and practice core skills until they become proficient. The article provides a strong outline of which app does, of what each app does and how it can be used in the classroom. Articulate findings. Reflecting on the core ideas of this article has shown me that I do not use reading based apps programs very well in my classroom. The main reason for this is my own lack of understanding of what apps are available and what skills they are useful for, but also access to technology at school as this can often be restricted, so I do not plan lessons around technology around a technology focus. Apps cannot be easily added to iPads and need to be added by an ICT administrator, which defer deters me from making suggestions. I have one child in my grade who is dyslexic. As a form of reinforcement for his phonemic awareness skills, I have been using one of the apps or the authors mentioned in the article. The app is called GraphoGame. It is a quick and easy game focused on listening to a single sound and then clicking on the correct letter. Once you have mastered this skill, the game moves into blends and more complex patterns. The student, who really, the student really enjoys this and feels special that he has access to an iPad when others cannot. He has also improved immensely with his phoneme graphene correspondence as he is able to practice his routinely for 15 minutes a day. Another positive of the game is that it frees me up to attend to other students without him missing out on his practice time. I used to use Spalding cards with him each morning, which was time consuming and took me away from introducing my reading lesson. Article 4, teaching the brain to read strategies for enhancing reading, decoding fluency and comprehension 2020 by Fitzer and Hale. Introduction. This article was written by Fitzer and Hale, 2020, from the School of Learning Difficulties. It explains um, the importance of being explicitly taught to read, as it is not a natural function of our brain, unlike oral language. This is especially difficult for students with disabilities, as research shows that 59% of students with special needs also have specific learning di difficulties in areas of reading, writing and numeracy. Statistics Canada 2009. The article introduces us to the idea of sight word recognition and how memorising words as a reading strategy is flawed in the long term and children need a strong phoneme graphene correspondence to commit these words to their long term memories. Fitzer and Hale 2020 then go on to outline some strategies for reading intervention. Summary even prior to formal education, children can be exposed to letters and sounds. They must develop an awareness that speech is composed from the smallest meaning, meaningful units of sounds, phonemes. That each of these phonemes has a corresponding grapheme and morpheme and can connect these to their visual symbols. They understand alphabetic principle and that phonemes and morphemes can be blended, segmented and manipulated. Pizza and Hale 2020. In early literacy learning, children are exposed to basic text with few words, predictable text and pictures. Children are able to memorise these words rather than actually decoding them by focusing on word, whole word configuration and their initial sounds, encouraging guessing. This can lead to significant issues in middle and upper primary as a myriad of words is too big to memorise, thus the student falls behind. Fitzer and Howe highlight the importance of building phonemic awareness and also connect to the importance of developing a child's vocabulary and word knowledge in, in order to improve comprehension. The author suggests some strategies for teaching students who have difficulties with, difficulties with reading. This can be a complex task as reading skills are interrelated and learning difficulty students can have difficulties in more than one area. The intervention approach can be categorised in the following areas. Sound and symbol association and phonemic coding, recognition and automaticity, fluency and comprehension. 
critique, strengths. The intervention approaches are broken down into specific skills, an article, and the article articulates which interventions are appropriate with each skill. For example, for the School of Fluency, Fitzer and Hale, 2020, endorse the idea of recording themselves and listening back. Timed reading for optimal fluency based off a teacher reading goal and using flashcards to build up automatic recognition such as bite and bit. When a reader is both accurate and rapid, it means that the word identification processes are becoming automat automatised. Then they no longer require conscious attention. This frees up cognitive space in order to, for the comprehension process to become stronger. Conza 2019. In a phonics-based intervention for older students, there is a focus on the importance of morphology and students understanding base words, root words, prefixes and suffixes. Direct instruction of morphology is an effective means to help with the understanding and applying word structure for decoding, spelling and vocabulary study. Wilson, 2005. Students who are taught word morphology have a strong comprehension of text as they are able to apply their understanding of one word to another. Stowe, 2020. Weaknesses. An article, this article outlines suggestions of interventions teachers could provide for students who are struggling with elements of reading instruction. These suggestions are vague at times and does not explicitly state how to use the intervention or what it is. Under the heading of comprehension, Fitzer and Hale 2020 state that the teacher should provide the students with memory aids to improve retention. Without any particular aids outlined, it could lead to a varied interpretation by the teacher. It also uses acronyms like RIDER and SQUIRL without explanation, as there will be need for further investigation. Conclusion Teaching reading is complex, and teachers need to ensure that they are teaching using explicit phonics instruction. Many reading approaches encourage a whole language approach, which is encouraging using contextual clues such as guessing, using the picture, initial sounds, or syntactic or semantic clues from the text. Bitzer and Howe 2020 believe that these strategies alone are flawed, and as reading is not a natural function of the brain, we need to be explicitly taught phonics to understand letters and the sounds they make. Targeting interventions to the skill areas of fluency and comprehension as well as phonemic awareness, means that teachers can be explicit in the techniques they choose. Articulating findings. Breaking, down into, breaking reading down into skills is important in helping myself as a teacher better plan targeted intervention, as it also helps my students to see which skills are important for developing and what we have to do to learn them. Fitzer and Howe 2020 use specifically designed posters as scaffolds to intervention. I plan to print and share these posters at our next team meeting to see how our team can better use them and incorporate them into our intervention program, particularly with small group work. Article 5, Reading Intervention in Primary Grades, a Common Sense Approach to RTI by Heidi Mesmer, Eric Mesmer and Jennifer Jones. Introduction. This article by Mesber, Mesber and Jones, 2016, outlines the importance of children being able to understand short vowel sounds, such as the first step to reading profici proficiency. Their research shows that if students were struggling with CVC words by the end of grade two, the student will go on to struggle in the middle and later years of primary school. Hill, 2012. Mesmer et al, 2016, suggests that the that with the, rigors, with the rigorous assessment which will go on to inform targeted intervention, students can learn to master these skills. Summary. Decoding is the focus for most of the early literacy interventions, with focused attention on teaching children the short CVC words. It is imperative that students in Foundation and Grade 1 receive targeted and explicit teaching of all aspects of phonological and phonemic awareness 
to ensure that students, struggling students, can be turned into successful readers. Hale, Hill, 2012. Explicit and targeted intervention starts with a strong assessment, which will provide insight into what a child can do. Hill, 2012. Mesma et al, 2016, suggests using an assessment with a decoding measure one which uses both a combination of real words and pseudo words. Pseudo words are suggested because a child cannot re will need to decode them and break them down using phonemic awareness and cannot rely on whole word memorization, context, initial sound or word structure. The test is conducted orally as this is a skill they need for reading. Critique, strengths. This is the first in the series of articles who, who, who was a strong advocate for authentic and targeted assessment. The authors articulate the importance of an assessment which is explicit to the skills of phonemic awareness and connect this back to how strong phonemic awareness is a precursor to reading success. The article explains the benefits and limitations of using pseudo words in assessing phonemic awareness. This provides the teach the reader with clear information as to whether they believe the use of pseudo words in polemic awareness testing is viable and could then choose to use it or not. They also suggest using the pseudo words test in conjunction with a Yotzinger test of, of phoneme segmentation, 1995. Weaknesses. The article strongly focuses on pre-assessment before intervention, which is vital to success in any reading intervention program, but does not go on to articulate what intervention strategies to use. The authors, ad the authors advocate for 20% of the intervention time solely focused on phonemic awareness games and tasks, but they don't give any indication as to what they believe is the best approach. It is then suggested that the rest of the time be used in a guided reading style of group. This again is given no guidance. It is suggested that the teacher assess decoding skills using this time but does not outline how they should do so. An experienced teacher may inherently know which skills to focus on during this time, but graduate student students, graduate teachers, sorry, should not be provide should be provided with further scaffolding and support around this. Conclusion. Mesma et al. 2016 believe that by choosing strongly focused assessment prior to any intervention taking place, children position themselves for success. They can go from at risk to successful readers. This takes place with an assessment of phonemic awareness before reading skills are assessed as strong phonemic awareness is a precursor to reading. Oakley, 2000. And 11. Mesna et al. 2016 believe that by conducting phonemic awareness tests which contain pseudo words will provide the teacher with the strongest data. Research suggests that some readers pass early reading assessments like running records as they rely on memorization, context or syntactical clues rather than actually decoding the word. Hill 2012 when a child must decode a pseudo word with a familiar word pattern to English, they can demonstrate their understanding of letter and sound patterns. Articulate findings. As a teacher in middle primary, it is clear that some students fall through their gaps. They are able to read well enough to get through a running record and moving from one level to another, seemingly progressing with their reading. Until the middle years when texts get harder, vocabulary more difficult and there are no pictures to refer to. All the students, all the strategies the child has been using up until now start to fail. I agree with the concepts in the article that early years teaching should focus on strong connections to phonemic awareness. In a 2-3 class where I have a small group of struggling readers, we are very much focused on their ability to segment individual phonemes. The idea of testing with pseudo words is new to me. I heard the idea from a friend of mine and was intrigued by the idea. I believe that it is important to remove the reliance of the visual clues to see if a child can actually decode. I will now try the use of pseudo words in my testing to see if student 
with stay with my students before the end of the year. I will also look forward to using a Yop Singer test 1995, which is a new assessment to me. I can see an example test in the article and I want to grab a, gain a better understanding of how the data is analysed. That is the end of my report. Thanks so much for listening.